Shalom Akim. I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rekakwadash for allowing me to do another lesson. Yahweh is who the world inevitably calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world inevitably calls Jesus Christ, and there's no God beside him. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit. And um, hey, this lesson is going to go into how this world, whether they believe it or not, believes that they can have everlasting life with the so-called white man, all right, but not with the Lord. And, um, you know, I was thinking of, you know, just, just kind of briefly going over the reincarnation topic yesterday, watching a video, and... You know, I woke up this morning thinking about how I woke up this morning thinking about how, you know, um, Esau, the so-called white man, these elites, they really plan on promising you, you know, everlasting life. You know, there was this show I seen, as you see, it's called Altered Carbon. And this is decent show on um I guess it's one of those so called cyberpunk shows. But in these cyber I guess they call it like cyberpunk um show I think I guess it's the genre for it would be like cyberpunk. And basically in these movies, like you have uh, what's the other one with Scarlett Johansson she was like a half uh, robot. I forgot the name of it. But anyway, it shows you how the future is going to look very dark, very grim, no life, you know, every man or virtually every man, you know, you're going to have some outliers, but virtually every man will be um, somehow uh, uh, linked up uh, into the internet, you know, as far as them being uh, upgraded, you know, having an upgraded eye, upgraded arm. You know, and um, in this particular film, as it says, Netflix Altered Carbon is a set in a future where death is arbitrary thanks to technology. I wonder what that word means. This is based on random choice or personal whim rather than any reason or system. You see? So basically, in the future, they plan on cutting the Heavenly Father out of the picture. Because through the Heavenly Father on this side, death is inevitable because sin is inevitable. You know, as the scripture is saying, um, was that Romans 6 and 23? That the wages of sin is death. And we under the, the son of perdition, the son of sin. All right. So it says, uh. Netflix Altered Carbon is set in a future with death is arbitrary or optional, basically, thanks to technology, but it raises some philosophical questions about the soul. In Netflix's new sci-fi series, Altered Carbon, humanity, what the hell is going on with this thing? Humanity has developed technology that makes it possible to transfer consciousness from one body to another. That concept leads to some pretty tough philosophical questions, though many of which are at the center of the murder mystery at the center of the show's first season. Every person in Alter Carbon has a device called a stack, basically a small hard drive surgically inserted into their brains when they turn one years old. All right, and if, for those who've been watching, you know what scripture I'm thinking of. All right, and for those who haven't been watching, Revelations 13 and 16. All right, he's going to insert the, a device in your forehead or, or in your hand. A device somewhere in your body, which we know is the RFID chip, you know, to um uh, that's connected 
you know, that or that connects you to the system monetarily. All right. But it's also connecting you in every other way. You know. Whereas, you know, today they connect you. You know, you're born, you get a social security number that's connecting you to the system. But in the future, when you're born, you're getting a chip, which when you go into the root word of karagma, one of the words is grapho, which grapho meaning in the uh, the writings. Okay, which goes into your medical history and your driver's license, your social security number, everything that characterizes you as a citizen of this particular um system you know the person's consciousness is effectively installed on the stack like software meaning they become the stack instead of a combination of their mind and body a stack can be removed from one body and placed into another and making bodies called sleeves and altered carbon interchangeable that means that a person in the world of altered carbon isn't truly dead unless their stack is destroyed because they can switch bodies. If they can afford it, that is, as it happens, a lot of people just end up transferred to whatever body the state happens to have on, on hand or being saved in cold storage after their bodies die. That doesn't mean they're going forever necessarily. Store stacks can be revived or spun up and installed in new bodies, especially if doing so benefits law enforcement or other interested parties. Okay? So this is what this devil plans on doing to you. He's planning on making you a perpetual slave. You know, to where he can put you on ice. However, you will come back and um, at his will if he chooses. For whatever sick fantasy he has. You know. There's another show called. Um, Black Mirror. And it was an episode. I want to say it's called Black Museum. And in this episode. You had this Edomite. Who had this museum. Full of uh, I guess. Different technologi technological advances. And at the end. of the At the end of the show. He tells a story about this man. Who was put on death row. And I forgot exactly how it went. But he coerced the man. Into uh, being a uh, a guinea pig basically. The man that was on death row. He coerced him to be a guinea pig. To where before he died. Basically he uploaded his consciousness. Into this uh, cell. And in this museum. You see a hologram of the guy. And the guy, the guy's, even though he's not physically there, his consciousness is still there. So you see the hologram of how he actually looked. And then his consciousness is still there. And when you go to this museum, what can happen is you can pull a lever and basically relive the last days of the guy's uh, uh, death. You know, because in, I believe even to this very day in certain states... Um, death row, I mean, um, you will be able, you will put to death by way of electrocution. So in that museum, you could electrocute this guy. And like I say, even though he wasn't physically there, he can still feel it because his consciousness was still there. You know? So this is what this devil plans on doing to you in the near future. Okay? There's another uh, one I wanted to show, brothers. He literally living in an episode of Black Mirror. Like, what is this? Live longer for 150 years in the metaverse, but only if you are willing to permanently leave your physical body and become a living app. So this is what the devil is showing the world. All right, go and show you that these shows are not just shows, they're predictive programming. Meaning, they're uh, prophesying what they plan to do to you before they actually do it. Um, yeah, I must not know my name, but you can't fool me. This is San Junipero, season three, episode four. Like, the 2045 initiative intends to let people make independent decisions on extending their lives in a new body after the biological body has been exhausted. 
This concept is called mind uploading, which will make digital copies of people's minds that could freely live in cyberspace unrestricted by their biology. They also mention Elon Musk and Neuralink, which is really just Black Mirror season one, episode three, the entire history of you. This concept might also sound familiar if you have watched the series Upload on Amazon Prime or Altered Carbon on Netflix. Predictive programming or were they just preparing us for this? <laughs> Y'all will Right? So, um, my take on that is, like I said, when you sign on to, because a lot of these people, a lot of the people we know, you know, a lot of people we grew up with, a lot of them is going to succumb to the image, you know, which basically they already succumbed to the image, the, the, the system of this place, this, this beast known as America or the beast known as America. All right. Uh, we reinvented from Rome. All right. This is basically Esau's image um, being played out. That which he haven't been able to uh, do as the Romans. He plans on trying to do it as Amer as uh, as the Americans. You know. But hey, how much more with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah? Let me grab that actually. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter ten. Verse 22. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. So if Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, there's eternal life as well. Okay? Well, not as well. There's only eternal life. You know? Because he's the only one that can grant life. As the scriptures say, he creates life and he brings death. Was that Deuteronomy 32 and 39? Isaiah 45? I want to say 45 and 6 through 8. You know, he's the author of death and he's the author of life. Okay. That the scriptures say before man was, he is. All right. He's the, and then he created his son, you know, whom he gave power over. He gave power. You know, over everything, over life and death, you know, the blessing of the Lord and make it rich and he add no sorrow with it. Okay. And this is why, you know, we as true followers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, we believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, no matter what, we believe that he is. As the scriptures say, they that come to the Lord must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will reward us with everlasting life. So let's get some precepts, man, because, you know, I got I got a few precepts uh, lined up here. It says. Um, I may not go in order, but but when I try to get the. Uh, you know, the bulk of them. So it says, Psalm 16 and 10. One of my favorite ones. For though, for thou will not leave my soul in hell. Okay. Which really, literally the hell that's right here is talking about the grief. All right. Thou, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. All right. Because when you go into the story of Yahawashai, the Lord raised him up after the, um, what was it? In the third day, so that basically his flesh wouldn't um, begin to um, decay. Okay, so the Lord raised up Yahweh Shai after the third day. All right, but when you spiritually look at it, you know the Most High will not leave us under the the, uh, the hand of the wicked, which this place is hell because another definition of hell could be um, uh, a low. A uh, place, I'm slacky. It can mean also a place of unredeemed um, souls. You know, so the Most High is not going to leave us under the hand of the wicked. All right, as we just read, I didn't read down, but in Proverbs 10 it says, um, let me see. I'll go back to a Proverbs 10 and 23. I think it says, it is a sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding have wisdom. All right, so it's a sport to this devil, all right, um, 
to increase the hell upon the world. All right. So this is why we can't stay here. This is why we. This is how we know that we're in hell. Okay. I was. I just. Uh, I was watching this video, which is a. This really good video is called Zeitgeist Addendum. Zeitgeist Addendum. Z e i t, G e s t, and then addendum. That you know is a real eye opener to. Um, why this place is called hell. And why we are debt slaves. Especially, well, the whole world is really debt slaves. You know? But we care more, we care about Israel. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So, like I said, check that out. Just to further, again, prove while we're in, we're in the deepest parts of hell. Under this devil. Neither will I suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Okay? And going into the uh, MOTB. The Most High is not going to suffer us to see corruption. The Most High is not going to allow us to succumb. Feel like you know we lost faith in Him to su to succumb to that um to the wiles of the devil. All right, Yahweh said, um, they can't pluck. What's the scripture? How the scriptures go about? They basically can't pluck none of the Lord's elect out of the Lord's hand. You know. As a matter of fact, the Lord actually said he was short in the days for the elect's sake. Thou will shew me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are their pleasures evermore. You know? At the hand of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, at the right hand of Yahweh Bashim, at the right hand of Yahweh is Yahweh Shah. You know? At the right hand of Yahweh Shah is the joint ears that's down here catching hell. All right. This is the book of. Yeah. Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. And it reads, it's like it, verse 28, 27, <laughs> 26. <laughs> <clears throat> But Jeshua beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or fathers, or, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my namesakes, shall receive an hundredfold. Because best believe, like I mentioned before, I don't know if I mentioned it, but basically, those whom, you know, we might have an attachment to, those whom... You know what I'm saying? We grew up with, we love. A lot of these people is chip ready. You know? They ready to cave in at the, you know, after a few days and not eating. You know? They stay worship their flesh. Okay? And the scriptures um say, well, even the apostle Paul, he said, In me dwelleth no good thing. That's why we can't worship our flesh. We gotta worship Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh Shah. The scriptures say, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay? And everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my namesakes shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. Okay? So again, we don't, we don't mind dying... For the Lord. You know, which brings me to here. Um, second Ezra 14, verse 35. You know, it says, and again, you know, I um like in this. This lesson, if you will, 
I liken this lesson to the aspect of reincarnation. You know, because again, when people when you when you speak about reincarnation in the Bible, a lot of people think you got they look at you like you got three heads. So here it is again. What's the Bible is the the mind of the Lord. So reincarnation in in, in the mind of the Lord, they basically. When they separate the two, they basically saying that the Lord, you know, the Lord, the Lord don't have um, power, but Esau got more power to where he can, you know, give you life and take it away at will. So it says, not understanding that, as the scriptures say, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. All right, and so Esau is only given. Esau's only power is given from the Lord, which means the Most High holds all the power. He, you know, he holds all the chess pieces in his hand, so to speak. Therefore, if so be, so uh, yeah, yeah, I'll start at 34, Second Ezra 14 and 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive and after death ye shall obtain mercy. Okay, and um, like the Lord said in so many verses, one comes to mind is Revelations 3. All right, it says, um, let no man take thy crown. Behold, I come quickly. Hold thy fast which thou hast, that um, no man take thy crown. And then there's another verse in Revelation that says, um, you shall be tried ten days. Be thou faithful, and I will give thee a crown of life. You know, the Most High is actually going to give us life. You know, hey, we actually don't know what it means to live. Okay? We have a glimpse of it. As the scriptures say, search the scriptures for end them. You think you have eternal life. So we have a glimpse of it, which when we follow, begin to follow Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that's when we spiritually begin to live. All right? But we're actually going to physically live. All right? For after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. All right? Now we bring this out. Again, going into the topic of reincarnation because reincarnation is biblical. As a matter of fact, when you go into the uh, physical aspect of this uh, scripture, this is Job chapter 19, right? If you don't see it after this, I don't know, man. It says, Job 19 and 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin... Worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Okay? So even Job seen it, you know, that he's going to see the Heavenly Father. Okay? And, um, hey, Yahweh Shah said, as, a, as far as reincarnation, he said uh, that those that pierced him is going to see him. You know, so he's just going to show you that all these spirits, because those that pierced him, they pierced him thousands of years ago. So how are they going to see him at his appearing? And they're going to have to answer to that. It's because they're back in the reincarnation, which reincarnation meaning read back in uh, carnation in the flesh. Okay. So let's go back to 2nd Ezra 14. And I hope, you know, this is all making sense through the spirit. All right. And 35. For after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest. And the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Okay. And then, like I said, when you spiritually look at it. All right. The scriptures say, um. Damn, I can't think of that. What's the scripture? Uh, in a, in the books of uh, Corinthians, the Apostle Paul spoke about um, being baptized in the Lord's death. Perfect. Romans 6 and 3. Call Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah says, uh, know ye not 
that so many of us, as we're baptized into Yahweh Shai, we're baptized into his death. All right, we were cleansed by the word, which the word of Yahweh Shai. All right, and through walking with Yahweh Shai, you know, we also picked up his haters. <laughs> you know, because the spirit of the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of truth. You know, so we speak against uh, the wickedness of this world, which the whole world dwelleth in uh, wickedness for the most part. You know, uh, we took on his, uh, you know, we took on his stigma. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like. As Yahweh was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Okay? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Alright? So this is a spiritual aspect as far as us um being us being able to live again, you know, we walk with Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Alright? And again, as I brought out in a physical aspect, the Lord um you know the Lord is with reincarnation. Alright? Um even Yahweh Shai said about the apostle John that this truly is a lie, it's coming back. I want to say that's Matthew's the eleventh chapter. Okay. So I'm gonna get a few more. We're gonna end it out. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 3, straight to the point. It says, Because I will publish the name of Yahweh. Let me start at the top. Give ear, O ye heaven, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. The words of my mouth are given to us through the Lord. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as a small rain upon the tender earth, and as it showers upon the grass. All right? And, um, hey, this word don't come back void. You know, the Lord's word, as the scriptures also say in the book of Nahum, uh, his judgment is passed every day. So it says, my doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as a small rain upon the tender herbs and as showers upon the grass. All right. Also shows you too that through the Lord's doctrine, all, you know, it affects all. Because I will publish the name of Yahweh, ascribe ye greatness unto our power. All right. When you go into that word ascribe, it goes into attribute something to, assign. So we got to assign greatness to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. You know? Again, whatever you deem as great in the Lord, I mean, whatever you deem as great in the world, know that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah is greater. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways of judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. All right. And according to the doctrine, the teachings of the Lord, we understand that at the end of the day, I'm um, going just grab it. You know, we're going to live forever with the Lord. You know, yeah, Isaiah 65 and 11, they shall not build in another inhabit, they shall not plant in another eat, for as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect, right? Those that have not bowed down to the image of Baal, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. So as 
we on this side working and toiling, all right, doing lessons, studying, going out there in the blazing heat, the cold. We shall long enjoy the work of our hands, all right? And the Most High is going to bless us physically, you know? And most importantly, spiritually, as uh, the scriptures say, he's going to put his word in our inward parts, all right? And then going into the two-thirds that's going to be put to death on this side, you know, they're going to come back in us as, you know, as our seed. As Apostle Paul even wrote, uh, all Israel shall be saved. Um, just going into that point of how we shall long enjoy the work of our hands. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 2 and 24. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. Okay. So again, prosperity comes of the Lord. Adversity comes of the Lord. Life comes of the Lord. Death comes of the Lord. Okay. And through Yahweh Hashim Yahweh Shai, the Lord is going to give us everlasting life. All right. Hey, Yahweh Shai even said in the prayer, um, this is how we ought to pray. Our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Proving that Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are two separate people. All right. Just came in the same spirit. Yahweh Shai came in the same spirit. But he said, hallow be thy name. All right. And we're hollow meaning what? Reverence. Holy. Perfect. Different synonyms such as this. All right. So I'll be uh, basically touched everything I wanted to. Um, Yeah, man. With that, Lord willing, you, I can edify. Shalom to the elect.